Welcome to Co-op Mode, round 105. This is the official video game podcast of Secret Friends Unite. I am one of your hosts, Todd Oxtra from beautiful Savage, Minnesota, joined by the Canadian Mark Carabin from Parts Are Unknown. Uh, I don't know if you're actually in a real place, Mark, but you show me where you're from, and I don't think it's real. It's definitely not. No, I've made it's like it Narnia up. or something. Uh, it, it is a figment of of people's imaginations. Uh, the The only thing I'm allowed to tell you is it's Al- Atlantis adjacent. So that's that's probably I've probably already said too much. Do I have to go through like a magic armoire to get there? Yes. Okay, I'll look into that. I'm going to check every arm where I come into people's houses. So we'll you really should. Yeah. Just, just yeah. and like knock on neighbor's doors. Just say, like, excuse me. I need to go check some furniture. Like Hugh Grant looking for uh, the woman in uh, uh, Love Actually. It always works. Well, yeah. folks, uh, we are here to talk about video games. Mark is fully recovered. So he is ready for my full onslaught of EDC. So I, I think he's ready. Still got a lingering cough, but my voice is back. So here we go. Let's let's do this. Yeah, this should be a fun episode because this is going to be kind of uh, taking in some of the past and some of the future, a little bit of everything. Um, but one thing you can be sure is we probably got a lot wrong when it came to our predictions. So we're going to start there, Mark. So we talked about our you know the year look ahead and our predictions and now we're going to talk about what we actually predicted for 2022 um we had matt sawinski on from burnout brighter and uh the playstation drive uh on as well so we'll speak to matt's uh, predictions so mark we covered this with basically the platform holders first mm-hmm. so we start with sony so mark how did you do not great i said kill zone would be coming back and last weekend last week uh, last episode, I I think I brought this up because I remember saying Killzone was coming back, and now that there's you know the PlayStation VR two, the the Activision thing, I, I really think it's time for Killzone. But I don't know if they're going to bring back Killzone, a new IP, whatever. So I changed this slightly, but I do remember mentioning it last week uh, as a, a slightly modified prediction for this year. So sadly, no Killzone for fans of that franchise. Yeah, which is kind of sad. But you know what? Mm-hmm. We'll keep going, Mark. You just said third-person shooter, so, or first-person shooter. So you're a little bit broader this year. So, you know, it could happen. You're not very specific, which is always good. That's how you win these things. Um, so Matt said, new Blue Point game unveiled. That's a big fail. They didn't announce anything. So maybe this is year they finally announced that. Um, <laughs> man, I just went all in on a couple of predictions here. Yeah. And I, I, like- I think I might have got per. Partial credit, but Jack and Daxter gets a Ratchet and Clank style remake by Team Asobi. Didn't happen. Uh, we don't even know what Team Asobi's doing. That we don't even know if they're making a new Astrobot or not for PlayStation mm-hmm. VR. Um, PlayStation Plus All Access is the new service which com- combines PS Plus, PS Now, PS Classics, movie, music, and anime discounts. I should have stopped while I was ahead. You just, yeah, you just kind of kept swinging. You hit the home run and then you just kept swinging. And yeah, that was, uh, that was good. That was a good guess. You were swinging for the fences on that one. Yeah. They should have went with PS Plus All Access and not had 15 tiers because that's going really well for them right now. Yeah. I think your plan was better. Mark Nintendo. I, I tell you, man, you kept it simple and, and I think you won. I did say Wave Race, and I didn't specify a new Wave Race game. Actually, I think if I recall correctly, I said, I don't care if it's a new game or they bring the old game back to a virtual console or or Nintendo Switch Online or whatever. And we got the N64 game. So this year I modified it, and I want a new Wave Race game. And you're going to get it Nintendo Switch Sports. I hate you. That joke never gets old, does it, Mark? No. No, no. Uh, Matt said expansion pass DLC, so I wasn't sure if he meant like um, we're getting more DLC as part of the expansion pass like we got with Animal Crossing and Mario Kart. uh, Yeah, yeah, because at that point we had, I think it was the Animal Crossing DLC. Yes. uh, Or maybe Splatoon at that point. There was one that we had at that point that we knew of. Thoughtling expansion, that was was part of it as well or Mm -hmm. no? What was it? 
was the Octoling expansion the the second Splatoon? Yeah, did that, that include that it? That became part of that. I don't know if it was okay. part of it at this point or if he absolutely nailed this. Uh, okay. I want to say that he absolutely nailed this because there was more DLC. There wasn't all Nintendo DLC included in this. Correct. But uh, I think he's he's got full points or at least almost full points. I'd have to go back and listen to exactly how he worded it. But uh, Matt, you're you're in the right ballpark on this one. Yeah, I, you know, and, and that whole group, the Carpool Gaming team, when they do their predictions, they also uh, basically, you would basically say the likelihood of that and they get points based on that. So um, this one, because it's so low hanging fruit, we would have probably given Matt like low points. Um, mm-hmm. What did Mario Kart, was that? Was that announced last year that was going to be included in the expansion, or was that the prior? I can't remember the Mario Kart. No, that uh, expansion. was announced. So again, yeah, Mar- Mario okay. Kart was uh, another win. Yeah, okay, in in, in his favor. So, um, yeah, unless you're good. Todd and you say my prediction was Nintendo Kart, um, which we did not get, which is about the only way I think they can really expand Mario Kart is just basically say, and everybody's here and they're racing in carts. Yes. Um, no, that did not happen. Nintendo Kart did not happen, uh, but we did get the expansion cart, uh, uh, pass. So that's yeah, something. New stages. Yeah. 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 Very good. Uh, Xbox, Mark. I still want this to happen. A new banjo game. Uh, uh, Xbox, Microsoft, they're, they're going full on acquisitions. They didn't release a ton of first party this year. And I, I really think we see Nintendo obviously crushing it with the family friendly stuff and Sony catching up with Astro bot and uh, some, some stuff that's more aimed at kids or family friendly. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think a new banjo game would be perfect. Instead we're waiting on that weird golden eye remake. I was talking to Barry Dunn about that today. And uh, it's just like Xbox gets prettier but no online nintendo is stuck to the nintendo switch online service so you can't buy it even if you want to but that does get online multi it's such a weird thing and we're still waiting on it it was just like hey it's coming soon and then crickets nobody knows and that's the hard part right um we'll probably get a new james bond actually announced as the actor before this game gets gets launched so we'll see a distinct possibility yeah, Who yeah I, I think so. I, Aaron Taylor Johnson? That's Silver? right. That's what you're, you're circling it, right now? Have you seen Bullet Train? No. It's a dumb, fun movie, Mark. I'm bringing that in. It's just great. It's like ultimately like John Wick, if he was just extremely lucky, but not that talented. And that's exactly the character Brad Pitt plays. And it's goofy. It's fun. Like and Ayler, Aaron Taylor Johnson, man, he is a handsome, handsome man with a mustache. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so Matt said Game Pass somewhere new. And actually, he got points with this too because yeah. Samsung TVs. And I don't know if we're giving partial points for an announcement, but Quest. Uh, mm. Game Pass coming to Quest. So it was at least announced this year. So I'm giving some partial points for that one as well. Man, man, he's better than we are. Oh, well. He is much better. You know what? I'm sure this year our predictions went completely accurate and we're going to be reveling and going to be yeah we'll see how that goes um i said xbox purchases io interactive and announces an elite series three with enhanced haptic feedback man todd you did it again oh well didn't happen no nope. oh, well. nope. then we get to third party mark there you go redemption time jedi fallen order 2 announced and shown off um yeah, and coming out soon by the time we're recording this. That's, what, two months away uh, yeah. right now? March? Amazing. And we still don't know a lot about the game. We haven't had, like, the like big that. unveiling. I, well, that's it, cool. We've shown yeah. enough that it's like they're they're continuing the story. There's a book coming out a week or two before the the game drops. Um, if you're a fan of the first, it's, it's expanding on it. We've seen some new lightsaber poses and uh forms and whatever and there's there's a mystery about who's you know who's in the box who's in the box yeah the, is that an uh, a high republic jedi is that a sith is it something in between um there's there's mystery around it and i don't want to know too much more i'm gonna get it and 
play it and I want to unravel the mystery while Cal does. So I'm, I'm ready for that one. I hope they don't metroid us where it's like, oh, you've lost all of your Jedi powers. I don't want that. I don't want that. I want to be <laughs> badass. Yeah. Yes. Uh, let's see. Matt said Final Fantasy 16 November. Well, Final Final uh, Final Fantasy 16 is coming, but actually a June mm-hmm. game. So uh, close, but no cigar. Um, so if you didn't put a date in and you just said coming this year, you would have won. Uh, myself, man, oh, man. I didn't get anything right last year, uh, but they were all high quality uh, predictions. Skylander yeah. Ultimate Collection or Disney Infinity Unlocked is announced. I'm hearing rumblings that they might be happening this year, which would be, be so good. Awesome. 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 Um, we had the uh, the Ubisoft game with the ships and what they did was awesome because they had the you could get all the ships if you want to do or just buy it digitally and you get everything. That's the best way to Star, do it. What was that? Starfield? Star, Starfield. No. Starlink? That's Starlink. Yes. Link. There we go. Yes. Star Skylink, Fire. Starfire, Star. Star yeah. yeah. That was yeah, a good exactly. game. I still, I, I, I still have I my R Wing. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Finn plays with the, with the R Wing. Yeah. The only bad thing on the Switch, it wasn't powerful enough to do really good co op. The, the, it, it just got downgraded, but the co op was great. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah. Yeah. Really good game. It'd be a good game to break out when Finn gets a little bit older. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then I said Rock Band is revived in Fortnite and they allow third party instruments. Well, uh, we do have harmonics, you know, being part of Epic, but man, I guess they did announce some new tracks for Rock Band, <laughs> like classic there tracks coming back. But I'm like, where are people going to play these? Everybody's instruments are broken in half in a pile. <laughs> Break out your broken instruments, some um, super glue, and an Xbox 360. And I got a drum. I got a Beatles bass guitar over there. You know, you eventually can go cobble enough stuff. And unfortunately, they're like five hundred dollars a piece on eBay. So there you go. That's so we didn't do very good. Uh, you Ooh. did better than I did, Mark. So you were the champion of co-op mm-hmm. mode. I think Matt was the champion of co-op mode. Oh but yeah, since he's oh, not yeah. Here, I'll take that award. Exactly. <laughs> you'll 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 be the Doug Bowser uh, accepting the award for Matt Swinsky. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's not what I want. No. Okay. Well, that is, we'll, we'll recapture our uh, predictions this time next year. So stay tuned and be prepared to laugh at us. Um, Oh, well, Um, Mark, what have you been playing, man? I have not been playing a ton now that we're, we're feeling better. I've felt like going out. Mm -hmm. So my gaming has been a little lax because of that. Uh, I've been mostly catching up on stuff that I feel like I needed to put a little bit more time in for tonight and, uh, and playing a little bit that way of like, okay, I got to round this out. I have to beat this. I have to finish this. I have to, you know, do that kind of stuff. So I won't talk about any of that. I'll talk about the one new game that I'm playing and that's vampire survivors. And I hate myself for sitting on this game this long how long ago did did you talk about this game that was i played it on pc game pass when it was first out because that's where it came first yeah about six months ago yeah jesus yeah and i i said that today i was talking to a guy at work about vampire survivors and i was like i i was like my my podcasting co-host like talked about i'm pretty sure it was like six months ago and i was just like yeah okay cool that looks neat and I'll play it. And I, I've had it downloaded for a while. And finally, this weekend, I was like, you know what? Let's let's dive into this. And um, that is all I played all weekend, aside from like a couple of matches of Fortnite with my nephews. Holy crap, this is great. Uh, it is the most video gamey video game that I have played in a long time. And I love it. I almost ignored your text saying that you were ready to record <laughs> because I am on the streak of a lifetime right now i've i'm about 25 minutes in so i'm very close to death wow and uh i already i already got um death screened once uh, i think it's like 30 minutes in right it's It's like it's around 30 minutes minutes, death comes for you yeah yeah so for anyone unfamiliar with vampire survivors this is on game pass it's also on Mobile mobile for free which i've been playing as well because i didn't get my fix on xbox i had to download the damn thing on my phone and my ipad i'm a little hooked uh so it's it's everywhere and it's on um 
Mac and PC as well through Steam and uh, other things. It's not free there like it is on iOS. It's like uh, five bucks for that. The well, base it is, yeah, DLC. Five, five or six bucks. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Uh, and you can get the DLC and the soundtrack for like 10. It's, it's wild. Um, yeah. So for anyone unfamiliar, this is a roguelike RPG, old school style, like kind of eight to 16 bit ish kind of graphics uh castlevania looking um w- bullet hell kind of thing too like you're you, you basically only control the person movement. that you're walking around your your movement the rest all the weapons are all automatic auto fire uh some of some are directional some go to the nearest enemy some just go random it there's a lot of playing of like, okay, what type of weapon do I need? How soon should I get this power up? And you, you level up fairly quickly at first. Uh, When you defeat an enemy, they drop a gem that helps you level up. And each time you level up, you get a choice of three things, unless you get some luck added to your character, in which case sometimes it's four. And, uh, you know, you can pick a whip or a knife or armor or health regeneration or whatever. Area of effect. Yeah. Exactly. And so it's a kind of a balance of, uh, especially because there are multiple characters who have pros and cons. Some are slower, but a little bit more powerful. Others automatically have health regeneration, but they're weaker, this, that, and whatever. Um, so it's, it's a game of the, the one I'm playing right now, you're, I'm, I'm like a priest who started off incredibly slow and with an incredibly slow attack. So the first part of his level was just like torture, basically. It was like, find the food, find those floor chickens and hope I can survive. And every time I powered up, it was like, okay, pick something that has a little bit more speed, has a little bit more of a, of a buffer zone. And now I'm just like spinning Bibles through the air and knocking things back. And it is, I'm a, a badass, untouchable, uh, still kind of slow, but I'm, I'm faster now, uh, priest. So, um, holy crap, vampire survivors. Uh, you'll, uh, you're, you're going to hear about that later. It instantly made my, my top list for the year. Hmm. Hmm. Um, it is uh it is a great game. Don't sleep on it. If you're like me, just just don't. Just get it on whatever device you can. I still prefer sticks controller. I still prefer a stick. It, it's okay. My iPad's big, so it's a little clumsy there. Sometimes I'd lose like my positioning or this you know the the virtual joystick or whatever. And then the phone I find is a little too small. So there's no yeah. perfect balance that I've found yet. Uh, I still have to test actually if it has controller support for iOS. Uh, you can, can use a backbone. You can use a Razer oh, okay. Kishi um, okay. to do that with mobile if you've got that. If you've got an option to do that, yeah. All right. Yeah. So that means yeah. it should work with my Xbox controller and the mount that I. I have think so. Yeah. 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 Uh, right. And Mark, I mean, the, the the thing that I think layers on the brilliance of this game. It's it's a one more time. Um, it's highly addictive. It's a yeah. strategy. It's you're choosing your builds. People have mm-hmm. like perfected certain builds. Like there's Team Garlic, which is a great strategy for like garlic almost is like amazing. it's amazing. It's amazing. Then people say, no, garlic's the worst. I'm like, what? So mm, when you hear yeah. that, you're like, well, how did they do it? And yeah, um, it's totally risk and reward because you know there's certain bosses you have to like like the big big bads you have to get because you get those gems, you get more drops and Mm -hmm. every level up is like taking a breath because that's the only time you can stop moving. There's no pausing this game. I don't think there's pausing. I don't know. I never paused. Maybe there is. It might might be paused right now. Maybe I should have paused. (laughs) Yeah, you should have. (laughs) But it, uh, I mean, the pausing doesn't help if there's a swarm no. of enemies and you pause. Because then you're like, what was I doing when I paused? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it, it, yeah, it is uh, very, yeah, risk and reward. But it's it's so quick, like you said. It's, it's just you're instantly back at the title screen. You can continue. And because you're earning gold as you play, then you can unlock buffs right from the start. Mm-hmm. So you might yeah. – instantly have more armor or instantly have faster weapons or whatever. So, and, and the gold, like it's not 
unlock everything all at once. Like it, it's going to take you a few rounds. It's going to take you a few rounds to unlock all the characters and the stages and keep going. And the achievements, I'm not usually an achievement hunter. <laughs> yep. They are so freaking brilliant with this game yes. with achievements because there's like 140 of them or 130 something achievements for this game. And they're popping off all the time. Every time you finish yeah. a round, it's like, hey, you found 10 floor chickens. Congrats. Here's, a, here's five achievement points. Hey, you unlocked four levels of your whip. Here's some achievement points. Hey, you got a knife. Here's some achievement points. Hey, you defeated 10,000 skeletons. Here's some achievement points. Like, it's just constant popping off, popping off. Like, one round I finished today, I got 14 achievements. Oh, wow. 14 at the end of the And round. it feels so good. I felt so. I felt like Superman. It's I like your teacher like, giving you a sticker when you when you're yeah. a good boy and you got all your you, know, you spelled three words correct. Mm-hmm. And it's all just through normal gameplay. Like yeah. it's not like you have to you know stand in the same place and flip a bookshelf over and find like the golden floor check. And it's just like normal shit that you're doing while you're playing the game. Uh, I didn't go through the whole achievement list, so there might be some hidden, weird, hard to get kind of achievements. But so far, every single thing that I've popped off has been just playing the game. And it's like, yeah, I'm kind of motivated to like keep going or like, you know, check the first few of like, what am I close to? What do I have to get for achievements? Um, you know, is there a character I have to survive for 10 minutes with or 20 minutes or whatever? Um, so it's got that perfect loop too. It's just they they hit on so many of these perfect little gameplay loops, mechanics, balance. There's there's no character that I've seen so far that's just like overpowered. It's uh it's such a simple looking game and simple sounding game, but it's damn near perfect. It's you almost think of like why didn't Konami come up with this idea? Because essentially, this is Castlevania, which is just so dumb. The Castle, Konami's just so dumb. They wouldn't partner with it. I mean, they should. This is what Konami should be doing. If they're not going to make games, it's like, hey, take my characters and our sprites, do something cool with them, and we'll bank it. Because mm-hmm. that's exactly what this could have been. Um, and, and Mark, this is almost like a new genre. Because I, I am older than you, and I go back to the arcade experience. This is an arcade experience. It's like, yep. how far can you get on a quarter? And that's exactly what this is. It's one play, how far you can get. And it's perfect for that. And um, this can get iterated. I could see this going and people trying and adding new layers and really making this a really cool genre. Everybody, there could be a Mario version. There could be a Zelda-like that does the same thing, to be honest. Yeah. And nobody would be like, oh, you're copying. They'd be like, hey, make more with my characters yeah. like and the cool music I love. Oh, the music, just amazing as well. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd yeah copy this because I'd love to just more of of this style of it just yeah do it. Um, some game publisher, manufacturer, console owner, reach out to this person. I think it's one guy, uh, one person. I think you're right. Yep. You know what? It's kind of like that. That that what is it? The cadence of high rule. Yeah. Open the door. He would probably love to iterate on this idea and get some money and play with some cool franchises. I'm sure you'd yeah. love that. Uh, Luca Gallant, also known as uh, Ponkel. That's who made the game. Like God. one guy. Genius. I'm sure he along is... the way he had help. Maybe unless he's just some sort of genius savant, like just wild. Yeah. This is awesome. This is everybody's dream, right? To like, I made something that's not like graphically intensive, but it has that gameplay loop that just is like in word of mouth. And yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Interesting. I just like quickly glanced at the Wikipedia entry prior to developing vampire survivors. uh, He had been a developer in the gambling industry and (laughs) used his knowledge of how to use flashy (laughs) graphics for slot machines as part of the allure (laughs) Of Vampire Survivors chest opening animations. Oh. Uh, damn it, he fully got that me. chest opening. Can't. Holy just, crap! You're right. It's a celebration. It, it is. is. It feels so good. It's like the Peggle mechanic yeah. when you get you clear of the Peggle and you get Ode to Joy playing. It's that satisfying. Yeah. 
I, yeah. I have some clips. So I'm going to put one in. If you're watching the YouTube video right now, you're seeing that celebration, I think, if I can put that in right here, um, if I remember. And uh, if you're listening to the audio, go check the video version to see if I remember to put that. Because I have a few clips because it's such a celebration. It's just Seeing so is believing. And that's truly what yeah. it is. I think you need to see it and then play the game. The barrier to entry is like literally zero. So that's that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about, and I'll talk about it a little later of where it ranks. But uh, what have you been playing? I've been well. I mean, I, I'm I'm kind of wrap up some things. You know, that's just kind of where I'm at. I'm still playing some more Gotham Knights. I I finished um, uh, Fist. I uh, tried some other games. Uh, the game, the new game that I played, Mark, is Sonic Frontiers. Yeah. All right. It it was certainly a Sonic game. Um. <laughs> I, I this game is very like polarizing I guess is the best way to say this. Hmm. I I like Sonic. I'm not a Sonic devotee. Um I can't say I mean I remember when Sonic came out in the Genesis cuz I was that age when it was um you know blast processing and I'm like I can't believe a game is that fast. I was like blown away. But I never walked away from that game saying, "Wow, Sonic was so much fun to play and beat." It always mm. felt like it was like Mario controlled great. And then Sonic, once you go fast and then you run into a wall, I just never, it just never clicked to me, even the 3d elements, um, you know, but there's fans that love it regardless of what it is. And I, I, I totally, you know what, took the hat. I love the Sonic movies. So mm. I'm not a Sonic hater by any means, but this game is. Wow. I, I don't even know what to describe. Um, to me, it didn't feel great to play like it's fast and it's utilizing like the fast 3D sonic levels where you're going through a level head on getting getting rings. You have the X attack where you, where you can spin and hit enemies and things like that. Then you can go off platforms and do things like that. So I feel like if you love those elements in a game, um, this potentially is the best version of Sonic in doing that. But it's also a open world sonic game where you can go fast you have like a turbo button that gauges that runs out eventually so you don't go fast all the time and it's not pretty it's a very ugly game uh considering how much poppins in it it's kind of ugly and not colorful um it's very like you're in fields and there's stone structures. And then uh, all of a sudden you'll lock something and these new ramps will come in. So it's divergent from like, it's got like, it feels kind of like breath of the wild, but if breath of the wild then added off ramps for a highway, it's just weird. It's just odd. It yeah. is very weird. It's like, you know, link gets his motorcycle in breath of the wild, but then there's like a motorcycle track for link to ride on. It just feels like that. It's just very weird. Um, and the game has, a plot that makes absolutely no sense. Um, it's got like, and I was complaining to Logan, I'm like, all of a sudden I'm doing something and it kicks you into a tutorial that doesn't feel like it's natural to the game, like kicks you into like a menu screen where you're learning to like hit enemies. Where like, shouldn't I just do that in the game where I'm playing? Nope, you right. should do this on a in a different menu. I'm like, what is this game? And and mm. the dialogue's pretty funky. And then I realized something when I was playing this game, Mark. I don't know if Sonic has a neck. Do you know? Uh, I think you're right. Uh, I don't look. Depending on what iteration, it <laughs> draw is, Sonic right now and does he have a neck? <laughs> yeah, depending on which, which iteration it is, I, I I would be willing to say movie Sonic has a neck, but video game Sonic maybe not. Because the only reason I came with that mark, I looked at him like. Does Sonic kind of have a neck? No, he doesn't. But what's it looks odd. So hmm. the character models don't look better than like a 360 game, which is kind of sad. Like uh, like what was that? Sonic 2016 uh, 360 game. Um, there, there's combat. Like you have to take down these enemies and there's punching and kicking with Sonic, which just feels a little awkward too. Um, nothing was that difficult. There's a lot of just like, 
I don't know. This game was definitely not for me. <laughs> I know a lot of people loved it, but I'm like, I, I just tried to find the fun and I just couldn't. I'm like, after all, I'm like, this game feels like it's trying really hard to be very obtuse, but trying to be like open to everybody. So I don't know. I, I, I just... I can see why this game was like 35 bucks a couple weeks after it launched because right. I think it's it's stigma it's there's a stigma about this game and they want people to play it totally get that yeah. um but I would not play pay full price for this game even if you like Sonic wait and try it and see what you think uh, maybe like Finn would enjoy it when he gets a little older just to play around with Sonic a fast level but yeah I mean I love Mario 3D games and just there's no comparison to this in Mario. So if you're looking for more of that, but if you're like, I like any 3D platformer and just open world type experience, this might be for you. But for me, I sent this back to Gamefly pretty quickly. <laughs> I showed Logan, I'm like, Logan, do you want to try this? Nope. And if you're curious, watch the donkey video. Video game donkey. Funny, weird dude. He's hilarious to listen to. And sometimes, yeah, he's kind of like, oh God, he's such a troll. But in this case... He's pretty spot on. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So that's my review. Um, it's a game. It's it's a game. Highest Sonic highest Sonic review I've probably ever given a game. And I lived sure. through a lot of the Wii games with Sonic, like the Sonic and the Black Knight and whew, yep. the Werehog. <laughs> oh, well. Um, so that's what we've been playing. Um, but now, Mark, it is Can time. Can we take a quick break before we do that? Oh, absolutely. <coughs> well, the main reason we are here is because, Mark, we are here for the finest in gaming awards presentation. As you can see me, I am on the red carpet. I am wearing a uh, fabulous uh, company, uh, Northern uh, North Face. So, Mark, and you are wearing something from the Don Henley co collection? Uh, I'm wearing a Henley, if that counts. Uh, sure. Yep. Yes, we are ready to go. Um, this is the couchy, folks. This is year two or three, Mark? Oh, this is easily year three. Maybe okay. four. It's, there we go. So it's many more years than we can tell. It's, it's, it's essentially vintage at this point. It's classic. Um, so this is where we give our best of uh, from our own personal opinions we d we typically have a combined the highest rated of the game uh is our shared if we don't have a sh if we don't have one that's similar then we're just happy to celebrate our own personal best picks so, so we're, doing, we're doing top five i have uh like 10 or 11 games on my list that if we like don't find a common one in the five like we will go deep going down the list and go deep until we find like a commonality uh, which I, I hope we can find, but you know, we'll see how it goes. Mark, I have an Excel spreadsheet that's very long, so I can go as long as we need to. Right. <laughs> also, we know some of each other's answers for a few of like the first yes. kind of things, but we do not know each other's top games until we read no. them. So no. you are hearing them as we do, just just as a heads up for this one. So yeah, uh, this and is, yeah. And we change it up every year. This year I did a couple of tweaks on some of the categories just to celebrate some of the games that not just new things, so things, some mm -hmm. things that are new to us and some of our personal favorite things of the year, which I think is really appropriate. Um, but first, we want to get into some of the community's picks. Um, so we're going to start with Jerry Steinhelper from the Facebook group. Um, he just listed his top five games, and he's got a really good list. Um, Last of Us Part 1, which is great because it's, it's, it's the best version of Last of Us for people that are new to it. Just in time of the series, which is the series is actually coming out this Sunday on HBO Max. I cannot wait. Yeah. Oh, uh, Stray, which was a PS Plus, one of the weird tiers, uh, day and dates. Really mm -hmm. fun cat RPG, which I don't know. There's probably a pun there. Um, uh, our Purg, is that there appropriate? Nailed it. Oh. Yeah. Pentiment, which is a game I meant to play, but, you know, that was a late add to Xbox and Pokemon Violet and Gotham Knights. So some good picks here. Mm hmm. Very solid. Okay. Brendan, Brendan Myers. Kind of, yeah, he, he went down. Do you want to do you want to give his as we go with ours? 
Um, why don't Not we get maybe give us word. his top five? Maybe give us because okay. I'm tr- yeah. yeah. Let's give us top five because we gave Jerry's uh, or Jerry's, but we can give yeah. his as we go through the rest of the the, yeah, the ones okay. that are. It's real. So uh, top five games, and Mark, I'm trying to edit it here. You know, Discord, when you yeah. paste things in, it doesn't have good formatting. Surprise, surprise. Mm-hmm. Um, so his top five games, um, and he, and I don't know if he had these in order specifically, but he said Tonic, or Tunic, Tonic, <laughs> Tunic. Mark, take it over, because I'm just butchering this. The top five games, yeah. Tunic is uh, potentially, if these are in order, number one, uh, God of War Ragnarok, uh, Mario Strikers, Shredder's Revenge, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, of course, and uh, Nobody Saves the World. Um, bonus, looking to get into a game that came out in 2022, uh, more Cult of the Lamb and Midnight Suns, uh, as well as Mario Plus Rabbids, Sparks of Hope, Sifu on Xbox, and Pokemon Scarlet, Horizon, and Gotham Knights. So there's a lot of games left for Brendan yes. Myers to, uh, to play from 2022 and that's a big problem for me as well i know for a fact that i'm going to guess my 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 top potentially top three but definitely top five based on the reviews and how much i like the first game that my list is going to change of games that came out uh Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get into this a little bit but moss 2 is one that's missing todd you asked me last last time what game I think is missing from my, my list. And I answered God of war, but Moss two, I think is, is right up there as well. And it's just one that I never got a, uh, around to playing. I haven't got around to purchasing it. Cause I finally finished Moss one. I got some other stuff in VR. We'll talk about that later, but uh, yeah, like Brennan, I'm um, yeah, I've, I've got games that came out in 2022. That's like a list of stuff that I'd have to play, but uh, anyway, we'll keep going. Yeah, I think it's always important to like say the things from the previous year you didn't get to. Make a list um, because it's always good to know. Remember, like when you're thinking, like I don't have anything to play. No, you have other games you want to play, and you probably forgot. It's just like game tracking is very hard uh, to keep a top of mind, especially when FOMO comes in and you're like, oh, I got to play the next latest and greatest versus hey, what's out there. So uh, that's why I wanted to include what was it like games you played this year from another year that you know you finally got to. So I think celebrating uh, you know things that you might have missed is really important. All right. Well, we're going to get into the categories where we really uh, played in and wanted to celebrate different things in regards to not just the games we played, but the community, the the, the whole world of gaming. Uh, and we kick it off with the biggest news story. So think on like what really impacted, you know, what we what we're experiencing in the world of gaming this year from a, a news lens. So, Mark, uh, what are yours? Uh, so I have two and. I picked two because I, I thought you might have grabbed one of them, but I'm glad you, you picked something different. So my two Microsoft moves to acquire Activision Blizzard, but since like that was big news, but hasn't finalized yet. So I, I wasn't sure. So I picked Stadia shutting down as a backup to mine. Cause that was kind of a surprise how quickly it happened and how just, you know, how they handled it and all that kind of stuff. So uh, two, two kind of big bombshell things on, on different sides of, of the spectrum. Yeah, uh, and I, I think about that. You know, the the I can't even remember when the Activision Blizzard was officially announced, and you know they thought it would be done this spring. There's a lot of things going on. Microsoft's making a lot of con- uh, consolations, uh, including apparently Call of Duty is going to come to Nintendo for the next ten years. <laughs> which, hey, that's good because it hasn't been. <laughs> So and and I think even to Steam too, where Blizzard has kept or Activision kept uh, Call of Duty off Steam because they've had their own launcher. So it's a win-win that there's some scrutiny around this because it's basically saying we're going to be more open. So um, it's not a bad thing, and I hope it closes eventually because I think it's good for the employees of uh, the company compared to who their leadership is now. So yeah. that's good. Yeah, and my TV keeps telling me, hey, by the way, Stadia is closing down because my LG TV supported Stadia, um, which is just sad that they just couldn't get it right. But um, the world of streaming is still around with Luna and GeForce Now and and and, and uh, PlayStation Plus with their service and also Xbox Cloud. So um, it's not dead. I mean, it's going to it's gonna change and permutate, and somebody's going to get it right. Um and, and I think Xbox probably has the best way of getting that right. Maybe Amazon as well, because Luna's not bad. So, and I know, um, uh, you know, mostly 
and his son. Yeah. They they are big fans of that uh opportunity. So yeah. uh for me, Mark, it's E3 officially coming back. Um, and not just like in like the worst way, which would just mean it's like the the skeleton of E3 and they're gonna try to do some things and they're gonna do it wrong. They're working with Reed Pop. Reed Pop is one of the best uh you know call it convention runners or whatever uh in the world i believe they do the star wars celebrations i think yeah um they run it for them they do other events as well they i believe they do the pax events as well so they know how to run an event and that's something e3 has not done well they have not brought the public in in a very easy way where it's fun and it's an event it's more like yeah after um the, the the business people are gone. We'll have you come to our our, our tables and maybe stand in line for eighteen years. So yeah, I think this is good. To trade you. Yeah, and which it's no longer. People aren't going to there to to buy their games for the fall. It's a different experience. Um, yeah. yeah. So I hope this is good because we, I think everybody wants a show that feels like Comic Con for the biggest show in the world that you can go to and and meet fellow gamers and play games that you've never seen before. And this could be the best way to do it. So I'm excited that this works. And we've got Jeff Keeley who's doing it in place, sir. So I'm going to see how this works out. But really, I hope Jeff Keeley works with E3 eventually, and that's where it pairs. So have the best show versus competing announcements and things like that. I just think it's going to be messy. Yeah, for sure. But Yeah. But E3, everybody says it's part of their childhood, part of their love of video games. I hope it, it survives in a, in a new way. Yeah. So, so Mark, I, I, I was changing this next category on the fly. Um, <laughs> I, I suck, but sense. I figure like it does make sense in a lot of ways. But I'm like, you know what? You're like, I'm not changing. But I'm like, that's perfect because you didn't need to. And the, and the category was really favorite hardware or gaming purchase because not everybody buys hardware with gaming, but they mm. buy something in gaming in regards to merch, collector's editions, uh, accessories, statues, things like that. So really, what mm. was your favorite gaming purchase um, of the year? Um, and, fame, uh, and and Brendan Myers had um, one that he called out, the Logitech G Cloud, because mm. he was debating on what to get because he wanted to have something on the go. He wanted to do some things that supported multiple consoles in the way he games best, and he loves it. And it's really fit his his gaming uh, lifestyle, especially with having a newborn. And that's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah it's, it's great to hear anytime he's, he's like super happy to be able to play something with that and it allows him to play multiple ways that, that you know, it doesn't doesn't get in the way of him being a dad, but you know, being a dad's not getting in the way of his gaming too much. So uh, it's, it's a great flexible option for him, which is, is awesome. Yeah. So, so Mark, for you, what was your favorite hardware or gaming purchase this year? And no surprise to anyone that listens to the show or that just heard me talking. I think it's it quest Two. Uh, I know it didn't come out this year, but I purchased it this year. So um, getting into VR and, uh, and being super impressed with, the games, the, some of the experiences. I, I just checked a big screen that, that you and I watch Rick and Morty and just brought in Disney plus. So oh, I that's watched cool. the Mandalorian on a massive theater screen in virtual reality the other day, uh, just to test it out and just kind of, you know, hang out in there. Um, so yeah, the, the quest too, I'm, I'm loving it. And Mark, I'm a little bit bitter about VR, but I'm I'm so happy for you because V. I'm thinking about now that my PC is working again. We that was my biggest thing about. I didn't talk about what I've been playing. I had my buddy Dan come over, and we actually fixed my uh, gaming laptop. We cleaned the whole thing out, re put it, so it's a gaming laptop again. And I'm I want to do um, some virtual uh, desktop to do VR through the power of my PC again because that's mm-hmm. what's great about Quest is you can do that. And I want I want to play Half Life Alex this year. Um, that's one of my goals and play some of up like I have Moss on uh, PC VR and I can do it through there. So I'm excited to do it there. So I own it and I just want to play it. So very excited for that. But I'm a little jealous because Quest 2 is getting a lot of love. Quest 1 has kind of been left the wayside. So I'm a little jealous. It's, it, even more, they announced more stuff today that's shutting down on Quest 1. So not exactly. a great day. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, not for me. But that's okay. Yeah. It was more for Logan wanted to get it and we didn't have Z's on it. So it's not like a big loss. So. Yeah, very cool. Um, for me, it was collector's editions this year, Mark. I got two, um, and I, 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 they both are close to my heart. So the first one was Samurai Jack. This was a limited run edition that went out of print. I couldn't get it. And uh, Rar, uh, uh, 
giver had reached out to me and said, hey, this is going out again. Get it. I love Samurai Jack, have sense for days. While the game is not great, the collector's edition awesome is because there's not a lot of Samurai Jack merch and like statues and things. And it's all set up behind me and I love it. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's got like a letter opener of Jack's sword. It's great. And it just is, it's wonderful. So for me, that's awesome. I don't do a lot of collector's editions, but for me, that that's why I got it because um, there's just not many options for Samurai Jack these days. And the other one is I got the uh, God of War collector's edition with uh, uh, Mjolnir, which um it's fantastic it's wonderful it's the way it's set up is just it's a masterpiece it's wonderful and i love the game and that was just another thing where i i don't normally do it but i'm like you know what why not and love it so mjolnir's in the case and mark i got thor's hammer from the mcu with lego so that big i'm gonna build that and that's gonna go right in the shelf below it so i'm excited this is gonna be awesome so now we move on to old games you finally beat or played in 2021. Uh, well, 2022. Yeah. Man, what am I doing? I, I must have copied and pasted. So yeah, so an old game that we finally got to. Yeah. Uh, so Brennan Myers did uh, chime in on this one. Uh, he, he finished Mario plus Rabbids and DLC, the first game before the second one came out. So that's awesome because that game is fantastic. And uh, for me, I already mentioned mine. It was Moss. One of my favorite gaming experiences of the year. My favorite thing I think that I've done on Quest, which is saying a lot because there's a bunch of Star Wars stuff on there. And yeah, um, so for something to beat a whole ton of Star Wars games, Moss was delightful. And I know the sequel is going to be probably in my top three games this year, but I never got around to playing it. So disappointed. I was I was trying to see if I could fit it in this weekend. It just didn't happen. And uh, anyway, there we go. Moss. Okay. Add it to next year. Thumbs up. We're good to go with yeah. that. Yeah. Um, let's you? see for me. Three years in the making, Luigi's Mansion. Finally beat the game. Um, it's a wonderful game. It's fantastic. And I kept on saying, I will get to it. I will get to it. And I finally did. And I'm so happy I did because, man, this is one of the best. Uh, it's just great. It's just a series that I thought was not going to really move on after the 3ds where we didn't and you know but i just think it's great i'm glad that finally people appreciate luigi's mansion after some stumbles not being a great hardware and it's the perfect home and hopefully this means we'll get more one of my wife's favorite games on switch luigi's mansion so good i loved it too but it's it's always a standout she beat it before i did so, um, I mean, it came out in 2019. I think I played a little bit every year, and I'm like, I mean, I'm finally going to beat it, and I finally did. So, um, yeah, I don't play a lot of games on Switch, but that's one of those hallmarks, those those 3D plat- action platformers. Absolutely love it for that. Um, all right, next category. Most disappointing game, Hot Trash mm-hmm. in the Summer Award, Bobby Pauls. This is dedicated to him. Um, yep. So, Mark, yep. what was yours? <sighs> I didn't play either of these, so there's a caveat that I haven't played Ooh, them. Okay. The disappointment for me is because I didn't want to play them. So these oh, were two anticipated yeah. games for me that I was hyped about, and then I started hearing reviews, hearing people very divided on them. Brennan Myers included one of these in his favorite games of the year, so maybe I should give it a try, and it doesn't deserve this award, but... My hype level was killed and I still haven't picked up the game. So that's why it's disappointing to me. Uh, it's not disappointing because the game sucked. I, it's disappointing because my hype level was killed by reviews. So keep that in mind when I say Mario Strikers and Sports Story. I think Sports Story sounds like a broken game and Mario Strikers sounds a little divisive. So that's that's my answers there. What about you? Absolutely. Yeah, I did play Mario Strikers. Um and uh, I thought it was okay, but I think it's more in the it's a good one on one type game or or a versus game versus a story and a, a like story mode RPG. Um, yeah, sports stories. It's disappointing because I really liked Golf Story, uh, but the House of the Dead remake. I was so excited. I'm like, how can they get this wrong? It's just a dumb shooter. It's on the Switch. So I could probably use motion controls. Use it like a light gun. And it's a fail on all points. It's bad. Doesn't look good. The controls with a, even like motion controls don't work well. Um, complete failure. And I'm hoping on the next switch, whatever, they've got like a little light bar on the actual like 
uh, tablet itself so they can bring back Wii motion style controls that are accurate because I think I want more yeah. like gun games. But yeah, even in a, a, a like a, a like gun a tad like it has IR, but there's no like there's nothing for it to see. So I yeah, like a light working in with the a dock. Light, just, even in the dock could work or something. Yeah, just, yeah, here's a thing that you, it comes with the game if you buy the physical version or you yeah. order it for five dollars on Amazon and it sits on the top of your TV and it gives you that accuracy. I don't, there's got to be some way to solve it. I think so. But yeah, for right now for me that that's where the quest comes in. Like if I want my light gun stuff, oh, yeah. thing, like that's where the shooters, right? Right. Like that's, that's it. Pistol, Pistol whip. whip. And uh, <laughs> uh, like, um, what's, what's the other one that's uh, similar? Oh, there's Arizona sunshine. Um, there's, there's a bunch yeah, of, so, yeah. Um, it's, like it's so good. Yeah, definitely. Um, so now we get into most surprising games. We're going to be a little more positive here. So, um, Mark, you've got the bug, apparently. Before I get into that, uh, Brendan Meyer's most surprising game was Tunic, how it all unfolded in front of you and how there was an in-game manual, which tied into the actual game. Uh, That was surprising for me, but not my most surprising. My most surprising game, because I hate card games so much, was Marvel Snap. How I got addicted to this thing for as long as I did, I've since kind of fallen off, but still for it to make the dent on me that it did, it wins this award. It's, it's, it's like in my top 10 games, I think of the year just for that reason. Like it's, it's holy crap. They got me to play a card game. You did it Marvel. Congratulations. Yeah. They got me to play like a couple of days. And so that's a, that's a win. Um, and if you like cards, Mark Marvel midnight suns, more cards, more relationships. Apparently you can See, get uh, swimsuits in that. I, 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 like the push of my luck with snap. I don't, I, yeah. I think it's going to be sounds... too much for you. Yeah. It's apparently a 70 hour so. game. Yeah. And the yeah, cards no. are just, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think Skip. it's for you. Yeah. Um, for me, uh, it's the game I just talked about last week, which is fist forge and shadow torch. I finished the game. I it was the only game I played dedicated for, to finish the game it was about 13 hours game while it didn't have a strong finish um i absolutely loved every second of playing that game just the exploration the shadow complex the shadow uh, symphony of the night uh type of metroidvania absolutely well done the story and the the the, the story and the, the the vocal talent and things like that lesser than but still Really a great game if you love Metroidvania. So yeah, it's my surprising game. And that came out in 2021. Awesome. So it's kind of like a caveat, but still pretty awesome. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Uh, favorite gaming moment. So Brendan Myers also has a favorite gaming moment. Mark, do you want to mm-hmm. say what that was? Yeah, I'll keep going with, with that. Uh, so his favorite gaming moment for Brendan was replaying uh, and Platinum uh god of war 2018 uh starting while my wife was in the hospital prior to the baby being born and finishing it with the baby in his arms after being in the nicu for uh 50 days holy crap man! that's a lot that's that is a lot that that's a lot to just take in that's Mm -hmm. a lot to deal with and the the fact that you you stayed positive and played through it all um and and still did full dad mode like Brennan. Uh, holy crap, man! That's one of my favorite gaming moments of the year was just seeing those pictures of yes of, and, and yes. hearing from Brennan and just like you know oh, I'm Absolutely. so happy he's got the baby in his arms and he's got the G Cloud and he's able to to rock it and it's they they were some of my favorite gaming moments of the year and I just can tangentially saw it through the internet so um, amazing yeah isn't it great how gaming can distract you from the the bad things in life and the things that are driving you and stressing you out and and then you can just then enjoy a good moment with a game and and you're in a better place so that's awesome yep that's 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 phenomenal uh gotta love it um yeah yeah. so mark uh what was your gaming moment of the year and mine kind of similar and revolves around uh around my kid so finn actually playing games this year and and not to any real skill level. I mean, he's two, but becoming an outright games ambassador and them kind of seeing what, you know, what I was doing and how excited I was for, for Finn and talking about it here. And 
you know, just, just sharing that experience of like, he can just literally press a button or kind of touch a joystick and win a race in Paw Patrol or watch me play Paw Patrol and, and hit the button when I have to do a quick time event mini game kind of thing, or, um, you know, just, just do those things. Or even just honestly him watching me play Super Mario 64 and he asks for me to play Mario now and watching him watch the Mario movie trailer, like, gaming's just part of his life it's it's awesome and he's excited by it and excited when he does something i don't know if you saw on, oh yeah you, you did mm-hmm. see it on twitter yeah you commented today playing baseball I, I let him i let him pitch a ball in super mega baseball 3 which i also dabbled with on the weekend but i forgot to mention it up there uh because i kind of forgot until now but uh, um yeah he was watching me play that and he wanted to play my turn my turn and I had on the controller and said, press this button. And he whipped the, he did a couple of really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It didn't look hits. too bad when you said like, this is going to go horrible. Mike, did he bean a guy and like send him to the ER? <laughs> so the first couple, it was like, you know, one was straight down the center. The other, you know, hit a foul ball. Yeah. And he got, apparently he got pretty angry at the foul ball because the next one, he just whipped that control stick up. And like, I mean, dead center in that guy's head Mm. and there was nothing left. He was KO'd and uh, Finn just laughed. Ejected from the game. It was just five game suspension for Finn. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So that, uh, yeah, that, those were my favorite gaming moments were, were with him. You know, it's a theme. I will continue the theme because that this year it truly was um, with my son being 17. He's he he's doing his own thing with games. He's got his own gaming PC. Part of it was building a gaming PC with him, which was a cool experience. His friend came over. It's collaborative. And he's big into that, which is great. And he's and that was like his laughed. He he was playing Terraria on his high end PC. So he's just a weird like he gets into this weird mindset of games he likes to play totally love it uh but I just bought a ferrari let's go to the grocery store <laughs> exactly let's let's i'm gonna spend my time parallel parking yay yeah yeah exactly um i bought a great big house but i'm not gonna furnish it we're just gonna sit here in some ikea furniture and and just have a good time yeah it kind of feels like that um but th- really it was logan had never played a god of war before he played God of War, skipped 2018. I'm like, you should play it. But he got into God of War Ragnarok. He played it on the highest difficulty, um, which is just a testament to his skill over mine. Um, and it was great because we had so many opportunities to talk about the story and where it was going and what we both felt. And we were playing it kind of in, tan- in tandem. So we had a great almost like shared experience with a game. And that's the great part of seeing your kids grow up and and understanding what they're what they like and how they uh, experience things and and how what they bring to the table. Especially as they get older, they can just ex- explore these ideas and 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 express themselves in a really cool way. So um, that was just a great moment because 2018 God of War, when Logan was younger and he was Atreus's age, was very much part of my gaming life. And this is just great that he gets to share it as well. Yeah, it's amazing. You guys were yeah, kind of perfectly in line to play that. Oh yeah, father son, age wise. Uh, I only had to call him boy, you know, and I might not call him boy. I might be saying something a little bit uh, more R rated than boy at times, but that's okay. It happens. No one's going to judge you. And I can't grow a beard, so I need to work on that. Maybe a fake beard because you know, I am the Todd of War, Mark. Exactly. You have a hammer. You just need a, a beard. You can you can yeah. get one. Don't worry about it. Yeah, we'll make that work. Um, yeah. So that is it for like kind of the the broad questions and the areas that we covered in the world of gaming. Uh, but now we get to the heart of this, Mark. And and I'm gonna laugh because we have the Heart of Hearts Award. Who named that? Uh, that's a I, I named that. That's a, a again named for Bobby because we didn't want it to. He always just said, you know, I know my heart of hearts. Oh, okay. Um, I'm like that. He'd, he'd regularly say, and we didn't want the hot trash in the summer to be the only legs. Sure. Bobby because that's kind of a, you know, let's go shit on something and that's, you know, going to be a legacy. So the top game is also kind of in, in memory of, of Bobby Paul's a Nintendo guru. Um, this is the heart of heart awards. Um, because I don't know about you, but I have no scientific thought put into my ranking. Nope. I might change them. As I'm talking, um, and this this list is fluid. Like I said, I know something's getting kicked off. Probably my top three, definitely my top five. Once I play Moss Two, 
of games that like came out in 2022. So uh, my list is fluid. I use my heart of hearts to tell me where things are going to go in this one. This is dedicated again to Bobby Paul's and I can't wait to see what we come up with here. Oh my goodness. And, and, you know, Mark, I am not one to restrict anyone. I always change the rules with Charlie when I'm like, Oh, you know what? I came up with four different ones. So that's perfectly fine. Fast and loose is how we play the game. When we talk about our favorite games of the year and we should, um, and then like, you know, we said, you know, honorable mentions, dark horses, I think it's all appropriate. Um, I try to keep mine to the games of tw- that came out in 2022. Uh, but you know what, if it's a new game you never played before, I always say though, I don't want somebody talking about the 85th time they played, you know, the legend of Zelda link to the past because that's fine and all, but I want people to have, you know, new, new experiences with things. So, so Mark, should we do like, uh, five going down or do you want to start with your honorable mention what 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 do you think you want to do let's let's start five four three two one and then if we need the honorable mentions we can we can rock those out or or whatever we we choose to do um because like i said i have like six honorable mentions i can kind of rhyme off and name um so i'm going to start off with uh, the number five game on my list and this one actually kind of gets tossed between my like number five and six. I was, I was debating. So maybe I will kind of cheat a little bit here and mention my honorable mention because these flip flop between high on life and Lego star Wars, the Skywalker collection, I'm given the slight edge to the Lego, uh, Lego star Wars because I want to double dip. I have that on Xbox. It's now on mm-hmm. game pass and I'm like this close to buy. I think I'm going to pick it up this week on switch. Well, and you and Charlie had a shared experience. I mean, in a lot of ways, Charlie, that's the only game he plays. So yeah. it was a little bit, and I even, you got me to, guys, got me to buy that damn game on, for FOMO, and now it's free on Game Pass. I'm like, why did I spend $70 in this game I've only played for like three hours? And it's it's a game that I, I play with my wife, and, and yeah. we we go back to it every once in a while. We want to play something. It's just a collect-a-thon and, uh, and going through, and, and I play for the Star Wars story. She plays because she just likes Lego games in general. So that's number five for me. But it was very, very close. I kept switching that and high on life. So uh, talk to me tomorrow, and it might be high on life. Mark, I'm going to make this very difficult for you because I'm going to be like – not playing by the rules so that's okay okay that's fine okay okay so (laughs) my number five is a four-way tie (laughs) you son of a bitch (laughs) i couldn't choose it was sophie's choice and i'm like i don't wanna so i'm not gonna i thought i was skirting it going back and forth between two come on four-way tie well, I'll go through Let's these very it. quickly. Yeah, we'll go through these. So uh, you were gone when I mentioned this game, and you got me a code for it, Swordship. This game yeah. kicks ass. It's phenomenal. It is a dodge-like or a, uh, I guess, yeah, dodge-like is the best way to put it, or or uh, move-like, because you just got to move out of the way. You have no abilities to cause damage, and it's amazing. It's a game like Vampire Survivors that could be a new genre, and it's like an arcade game. Absolutely loved it. Uh, Tinykin. This is the Pokemon game or the, the Pikmin game I've always wanted. And it's wonderful. Um, it's on Game Pass. It's it's phenomenal. The art style is amazing. I loved this game. It's really awesome. The Quarry. You know how much I love these type of games, mm, Mark. Yep. And this is super massive and it's their best game yet. I absolutely love this game. It's wonderful. My wife got to me watch me play and said, what the hell's wrong with you, Todd? Why do you keep dying? And what's going on with all these people? And what's this like crazy drama loved it and it ends with a podcast like we have we have a podcast it's it's really creative yes we do have a podcast what are we even doing right now we're doing a podcast what is this we should record this and put it on the internet mark that'd be awesome yes yes we will get around to that in 2023 um ghostwire tokyo this game is not loved by anybody and this is actually going to go to probably go to game pass as part of the xbox acquisition of bethesda absolutely Mm. love this game it's a first person uh, kung fu movie in a lot of ways it's really wonderful loved it with being in tokyo and just living in that world with with weird ghost stories absolutely loved it so that's that's my top that's my five (laughs) times four (laughs) all right Okay. All right. I'm pathetic. Sure. Okay, Mark. I appreciate number four. the indecision. I thought I was going to be the one and you were going to nope. be like, yep. All right. Cool. Good enough. Uh, number four. 
a game that Brennan Myers mentioned as well, Tunic. Loved it. Thought it was delightful. Thought it was absolutely balls to the walls hard. I turned the difficulty down to story mode and god mode Ooh. where I couldn't die for some of the bosses. But the mechanic of the the manual in the game telling you what was coming up basically and what moves you'd need to know and unlocking that as you go. I thought it was such a cool mechanic. <coughs> and I, I just, I loved everything about how this game kind of rolled out and the, the art style, the combat, the you know difficulty, this, just as it, as it unfolded, it was just delightful. So uh, Tunic, number four for me. I'm glad you point out the, 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 the moving the difficulty down because um, what I loved about the original Legend of Zelda, it wasn't difficult, but it was a challenge in regards of like, where do I need to go next? So I love the fact yeah. that you could dial the difficulty down and make it more like a, a Legend of Zelda experience versus a roguelike or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and that's, um, and I was playing it just normal difficulty or hard difficulty or whatever it was. I can't remember, but I was, I was playing it, you know, kind of as it was intended mm-hmm. to play or intended to play whatever you want to call it. You know, um, at first I, I was playing it that way. And then I hit a boss where I died like 50 times. Yeah. And my wife happened to be watching for a little bit and she was just like, should, should you just like maybe take a break? Why? She, you know, yeah. No, <laughs> turn it down. Uh, it was just like God mode rolled through it and it was still a tough boss, even on God mode. So it was like, okay, yeah, I think that's kind of how I'm going to have to rock some of this game. That was kind of later on, but it was still, like you said, at that point, it's, it was kind of like figuring out the path, figuring out the map, figuring out mm-hmm. where to go and how to do Absolutely. Things. That's a challenge in itself. It's of just, yeah. yeah, exactly. I don't want the, like, I just can't beat a boss, so I can't move on. I mean, that's right. Um, I'm glad that that developer said, you know, I'm not going to put a barrier away for people just to experience this game. Yep. Um, cool. Yeah. Similar, similar feelings to like Celeste where mm-hmm. personally I didn't turn the difficulty down because I felt like I had to conquer that mountain. But if you get stuck in Celeste, please, please turn the difficulty down and just do it because it's an important story. And I think people should play Celeste and and should see how the story finishes, uh, even if you don't have the patience to sit there and 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 restart the same part of that mountain 160 times before you get the timing right or before you figure it out. Um, for me at the time I was playing Celeste, I did. For me right now, I think I'd, if I had to play it again, I think I would turn the difficulty down because I just, my gaming time is more limited than when it first came out. So very kind of similar feel to me for that one of, of you know, as far as the the difficulty scaling. Very good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I like that difficulty shouldn't mean that you can't enjoy a game, but I totally get it. Some people don't want the difficulty to be the main point of the game. Yeah. Yep. All right. What's your number four? Inscription. Uh, you talked about Marvel Snap in card games, and like this was the card game that stuck with me. And I gave up, but then I watched somebody played more of them. I'm like, oh, I got to get back into this because it's not about how good you are at the cards. It's the story mm-hmm. that goes along with playing the cards and the fact that you've got so many irreverent things that happen with this card game where it's mystery. It's mm-hmm. it's a little spooky. And you can actually step away from the, the table with the cards and explore and mm-hmm. find mysteries and and move on and your cards often will speak to you which is so cool in the mechanics and the, the the aesthetic of it is a lot like a old pc game um mm. where it's like minimalistic but it's effective and this game is now on other platforms i think it's on switch um which would be highly effective just being able to to move your cards around it's like that it's yeah. it's it's really really inventive and i like how they turned um the card mechanics on their head and made it more than just i know how to play a card game very well it was it was really about the cards are what get people to the table but it's stepping away from the table really made me think the game was really interesting so yeah i remember you playing that one i was wondering if it was gonna finish in there so that's that's great uh number three for me i'm rethinking this one as i'm talking about it (laughs) 
Just just in the placement, not not that this game no, 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 is fantastic. No, no. I don't. Yeah, and I think we should do honorable mention before number one. So if you have one, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. You know what? I'm gonna put no. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm gonna put Mario Rabbids Sparks of Hope in number three. Okay. Did I it thought, kick something out or did it move something forward? No, I I flip flop between three and okay. two, so okay. I, I don't want to spoil two, but you'll you'll see in a okay. second. Um. Yeah. So it, 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 Mary, I thought Mario Rabbids Sparks of Hope was phenomenal. I thought the first game was an absolute revelation, and this one did stuff better. You got rid of the grid. There was more kind of fluid, interesting combat to it. Um, the story was really cool. Uh, there was some you know, kind of things here and there that I've kind of would have done differently or, or that, you know, could have sped up a little bit, but overall I thought as a, a, as a sequel, they improved on the first one, made some really good changes. And it's, it's a series that I never expected, definitely never expected a sequel. And I, I love to have, so, um, could very, very easily go in my second spot. Could almost go in my first spot, to be honest. Like sure. these these top three, like my first one, even like one and two are more recent in memory. So like that might be playing a little bit into this too. Yeah. But Sparks of Hope is is up there. So it's it, it's definitely in my top three and the, the place is kind of fluid but i'll go with three for now very nice yeah that's it's it's a lot of people's first entry into that tactics uh style gameplay and it's who would ever thought this would have been the rab is teaming up with mario and doing a tactics game it's crazy yeah it's it's amazing amazing yeah what's your number three tmnt shredder's revenge mm. wowie wow we're in like the 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 glory days of the brawler and not only you know the brawler but the brawler like 2.0 which is not just how far can you get on a quarter it's like now you are have like complex fighting systems you have uh collectibles to get uh you have art styles that are better than the original but make you feel like you're in the original like um with streets of rage and you know yeah. battle toads and things like that and wow uh i i just you know can't think of a better uh you know franchise to just really take this to the next step because we all grew up on those turtles um, arcade games and the different mm-hmm. versions and this was great and being on game pass day and date um made this probably one of the best games on xbox this year because they didn't have their own games so they propped up games um to really take the lead and i i really respect that and i'm glad they did because man uh and i haven't even played this game co-op yet and i'm sure it's even better in co-op so um really really a great game absolutely absolutely didn't crack the top five but it's on my list so that could be a tiebreaker uh this that that's the first one that we both have on our list so that's that's pretty interesting okay okay my number two controversially on this list because it's so fresh in my mind vampire survivors oh right okay so weird weird addition Weird addition, but I don't think if I played this six months ago, two months ago, whatever, I don't think that my feelings would change. I played enough of this to unlock several levels. I've got every character so far uh, that that I can see. So that I think there might be some more hidden characters, but like I've unlocked whatever nine, eight or nine characters or something crazy like that. Um, I've played this on mobile. I've played this on my iPad. I've played this on Xbox. Um, And for all the reasons I talked about earlier, uh, Vampire Survivors, like I said, could easily go in the third spot instead of, and and kind of move Mario Rabbids up. It's so fresh in my mind that I, I, I want it up there. 
So we'll we'll leave that in number two for now. Marky Mark. Funky Bunch. You and I are samesies. No shit. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. Like you say, could this game have come, you played it like six months ago or whatever, like me, would it still be on your list? And that's exactly what it was for me. Um, now, I will say, you're far better at this game than I am, but that didn't take it away from me enjoying this experience. You can be horrible at this game and still feel like, I just got to play it one more time, because you do feel like you do get a little bit better every time. Mm-hmm. It's not about beating the game. It's about uh, how can I do something different? How can I survive one more minute? Um what can I do to do differently to get a little bit better? And it is overwhelming at times. And when you do well, you feel like you accomplished something. And that is really what you want to feel like. You don't have to feel like you're punished and, um, no, get good. It just have fun and just have a good time and, 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 and learn from others and say, Oh, you're playing this game too. What did you do? It's like a shared experience. And that's because it's so simple. It's not like you have to worry about like, well, have you gotten to this part? No, <laughs> it's 30 minutes max. Yep. So it's not, you have to worry like spoilers. Oh, spoilers, Mark. Did you do that thing? No, because maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. I don't care. Cool. Oh yeah. Awesome. Okay. And yeah. so that's your number two as well. It is my number two. That is going to be our game of the year, by the way, because there's no chance in hell that my number one game is anywhere close to your list. Yeah, you don't even have one of the consoles to play the other games, which is just, yeah, 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 it's inevitable. Um, So we should do honorable mention before we get to number one. Sure. If you have yeah. one. So, uh, no, I have several honorable mentions and because sure. you had 17 uh, number four. It's allowed. Five games, uh, I'm, I'm going to go through all. So I already mentioned High on Life could have easily been number six. The other games that were on like my top 10 or 11 kind of thing, I, and it's 11 because I just inserted Vampire Survivors in there. I had a top 10 list last week that I thought was kind of locked in-ish. Um, so Splatoon 3. Shredder's Revenge, Marvel Snap, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, and Pokemon Legends Arceus. Um, I thought they were all fantastic experiences for one reason or another. Um, you know, Kirby, I was surprised with Pokemon Legends Arceus. I thought they could and should learn some things uh, for the mainline Pokemon games, and I thought it was a, a cool spin on the franchise. Marvel Snap talked about it already. How do you get me to play a card game? that and i think you very eloquently put why tmnt is such an amazing game um and then splatoon 3 uh the fact that i haven't been playing splatoon 3 quite as much as like the first or second splatoon um partially because there's been a lot of stuff to play this fall that i've been trying to keep up with as much as i can also was kind of sick and didn't feel like playing anything new um but also like the 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 Bobby Paul's factor kind of yeah. uh, factors into Splatoon three. Every time I play that game, it hurts a bit. So um, it's still on my list. I still love it. I still love the single player mode was phenomenal, and uh, multiplayer has never been better. But um, it hurts to play. So there we go. That's kind of my honorable mentions. So what do you have in honorable mentions? Yeah, for me, um, yeah, and I, I think I'll do very similar to you. Um, the games that just were def- definitely stood out in my mind, uh, but they were definitely didn't make my top five. Um, so one of those would be Sifu. Uh, was mm. the this is the iconic kung fu movie, cool mechanics, but I suck at it. So that was where the difficulty got in the way of really getting very far. But I loved what they did and the mechanics they did. So Sifu, if you like a uh, kung fu movie come to life and when you die you actually don't die but you just get older it's kind of a cool mm. mechanic my son absolutely loved that um another game uh that would be in there and a game where once again i bring it out because it's 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 a game that everybody's talking about and i did experience it and i only am going to mention this because i got to see my son play it and excel at it and that's elden ring mm. i suck at the game and i just don't have the time to get better at it so i'm not going to uh, besmirch it by saying it's not for me but it is for everybody else it seems like <laughs> and it is fo- it's a FOMO game um, but 
I understand, and I could see where I could get into it like I did with Bloodborne, but mm. it is a game where it was the game of the year for so many people, and it, I could see where you could get into it. I just don't yeah. have the time for that. Um, another game um, that I would say probably is right there is um, Kirby and the Forgotten Land. I beat the game. It's probably my favorite Nintendo game this year. It was close, um, but it's a Kirby game. And I know that's like not like putting it away on the side. I just mm -hmm. feel like it's still a Kirby game. And so it's not like that Breath of the Wild or something like that. It's a fun, cute platformer. If you really want to get deep and get all the stuff, it gets more difficult. But for me, it was fun, but it wasn't like, oh, this is setting the bar for Kirby. It's it's a Kirby game. Um, that is the best Kirby game that's ever been, is probably the best way to put oh, it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So that's where I landed with my honorable mention. Um, can I take a pause right now? Sure. I'll be back in a sec. I'm going to pause. So, Mark, you had a drum roll already? Number one, are you ready? I'm oh, ready. I am ready. Well, Donkey this... Konga, maybe. Donkey <laughs> Konga. <drum roll. laughs> Fantastic. Uh, <laughs> speaking of, uh, yeah, the plastic instruments earlier, yeah, Donkey Konga, holy. Um, probably super rare and expensive, I'm guessing. But I, I'm, not I'm sure somebody that. beat dead, uh, like one of the, the, the Soulsborns with the Donkey Kongas, too. Probably possible. Um, all right, number one, I feel weird about this because it really shouldn't be number one. And I should, I know I shouldn't be rewarding this company with a number oh, one no. choice because this game is broken in, in certain places, <laughs> it is buggy. <laughs> It runs like garbage at times, but dag nabbit, if I didn't love Pokemon Scarlet so much that I put like a ton of hours in, played the absolute hell out of this, beat the story, beat every single path that you could do, and then rolled credits with Ed Sheeran and like dropped back into the world and was like, cool, what's next? Let's keep playing. Like it had a surprising, very heartfelt story that like hits you in the feels directly, like slaps you in the face and subverts what you think you should expect from like a Pokemon story in several different ways of like, not only is this an emotional beat, but then here's another hidden one. Here's something with way more depth and truth and like reflection on how the world is and uh, self-realization and stuff than I ever expected from a Pokemon game. And I've been playing since blue, every single mainline Pokemon game um, straight through. So uh, yeah, I it's, that this was um, a surprise for me just be based on how other people experience this game and, and how, you know, I've, I've, <clears throat> I've heard so much. I haven't picked this game up. I'm not going to pick this game up until it's patched until they fix it until this, until that blah, 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 blah. And um, it's not perfect. I had two game crash, like full game crashes playing this slow down frame rate issues, that kind of stuff pop in, but none of that took me, completely out of the experience to the point that I didn't want to play it anymore. Even the game crashes. Usually a game crash is like, I got to put this down. I'm going to wait. I'll wait till it's patched. I'll wait till it's fixed. This one, it was like game crashed. Okay, cool, cool. Start back up again. Let's go. Like, I don't know. I'm kind of mad at myself for loving it so much, but also I, I just, I don't know let me catch stupid little Pokemon monsters and just explore this awesome world that they built. And were they a little too ambitious? Maybe were they rushed to get it out this holiday season? Absolutely. Freaking lootly. Uh, Nintendo needed a big holiday thing. I think honestly, I think if Zelda was ready, this game would have been pushed. I think this was big pop and Nintendo coming through and being like, we need a holiday thing and you're it. So push this thing out now. Um, 
I hope they keep patching it. I hope they keep making it better, but it's still my game of the year. It's still a game that I, I still go back to. I'm still playing this the stupid thing on my switch and I can't put it down. And I look at it and I'm like, okay, there's some friggin' Raichu stuck in a, the side of a mountain and he, he's clipping in and out and I, you know, it, it's a weird, terrible bug. And I take a screenshot of it. I'm like, Hey, look how stupid that is, <gasps> but there's a shiny thing over there and I'm going to go chase it down. It's just, I don't know. They did something they did for me more right than wrong. They just tipped it in that scale. I know how dumb that is. I know this shouldn't be number one, but it, for me, it is. I know there's better games even on my list. That's why I'm not going to be mad when Vampire Survivors is our overall couch co-op game of the year. Uh, Mario Rabbids Sparks of Hope, way more technically complete game than this. Probably should have been number one. But when I was done with Sparks of Hope, I was like, cool. Hopefully they come out with some DLC. When I was done with Pokemon, I'm like, nah, let's level these guys up. Let's change my team. Let's go shiny hunt. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. Let's go find something I haven't found. Breath of the Wild style. Like that was the differentiator for me. So um, I tear me apart on Twitter, make fun of me in the discord. I deserve it for sure. I know it, but uh, oh, Pokemon Scarlet's my game of the year. You can talk hear the disappointment the- in my voice. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, talk about the, the year of Pokemon. I mean, you get two huge Pokemon games in the same year, and it's like, did they really need to do that? Could have Arceus have shifted and give that more time to be the game of the year? And it just seems like it's such Absolutely. a weird... Because because Arceus could have shifted because they had just released Pokemon exactly. Brilliant Diamond. It's just such a weird Pokemon idea. Snap. Yeah. But, like, yeah. And and game that I could have that I finally beat in 2022, Moss could have instantly easily been replaced by Pokemon Brilliant Diamond because I finished that this year because mm-hmm. I was Pokemon burnt out last year when that came out. So I let it sit and finally got back to it and like rolled through it getting ready for Pokemon Scarlet. And I was in a poker mood and I was ready to go. But yeah, they easily, easily could have shifted some yeah. things around and, and pushed that and whatever. But um, anyway, I said what I said. I'm sticking with what 2023 I said. 2023 is the year that Pokemon Company and, and Game Freak unionizes. They're like, stop making us make all these games. Oh my God. So the nice thing with 2023 is most likely we're going to be getting – some DLC, DLC and maybe yeah. either a remake or just some weird sure. offshoots, like whatever. That's all you so should really this, do. This should be a quiet poker year. Uh, and I say that, and they'll probably release five games this year. But Pokemon, it's the year of Pokemon theory. Sleep, Mark. I'm calling it now. Yeah, just, there we go. That you know, that, in theory, this should be like a DLC, a little bit quieter year. Fix this game, kind of thing. You know, that that kind of stuff. So Snorlax. Anyway, that's Snorlax. It's his year. I would, yeah. Hit me with a Snorlax game. Let's do this. If anybody's going to sleep, it's going to be Snorlax and get Pokemon do whatever he is. Yeah. Snorlax's Ring Fit Adventure. Get fit with Snorlax. Snorlax has to get up. Pokemon game. That is that is what they need to do. There's going to be a a ring Pokemon, and it's going to be Pokemon X across Ring Fit. Oh my God, Mark! Did we just make a million dollars? I, I think so. Snorlax is sick of blocking the path for everyone. He's like, you know what? I'm going to stop sleeping in everyone's way. I'm going to stop being an enormous roadblock. I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to get my life together. I'm going to get up. I'm going to move around. I'm going to be a little bit more active. So I'm not blocking traffic. And that's how it's going to go. Is there like Pokemon dumbbells and like Pokemon, like uh fitness there bands? Should be. That's where we need to go. Pokemon Fitness 2023. Get a macho trainer. Let's do this. Oh, God. That's crazy. Yep. Love it. I love it. We make these games and Nintendo can profit from our ingenious. Perfect. Give us a call, Nintendo. Todd, yes. what is your game of the year? Uh, I'm like a uh, Taylor Swift song, essentially unpredictable, um, but very popular. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, Everybody says that, right? About me? Yeah. Um, 
God of War Ragnarok. It's my number one. I I don't know how it, how it couldn't have. And the fact that, like I said, the story with myself and Logan playing it together and the fact that they took a game where it was... It, the only thing I can say that's bad about God of War Ragnarok, there was too much to do in this game. It was less tight than 2018, but mm-hmm. as people blame Sony for like, oh, I play your game and I get off of it and I don't come back to it. They said, you know what? We see you and we know what you did there. You don't have to do all these things, but we're going to give more stuff to do after you play the game, uh, which means you don't just trade the bank game back and do this stuff. So, um, but man, if you just played the storyline straight in, which you could, it was great. It was fantastic. They took all of the things from 2018 and they built upon it. A better story better character development, more gameplay elements that were awesome and more ways to play after the game. Um, And it really branched a new path for both Atreus and Kratos. Uh, It wrapped up some things and created some new relationships. And I am just so curious to see where they go next. And that's really exciting to me Um, because I think we've ended, and they've said they've ended this chapter in the Norse mythology Mm -hmm. But we could go elsewhere, Egyptian, uh, other gods, um, which would be awesome. So I, I just, I just think of the gameplay is fantastic. Like Logan played it on the hardest difficulty. He's a hardcore gamer, and it challenged him. And he had to figure out the right ways to uh, build the get the build he wanted, the weapons he wanted to use. We discussed like what should we use to uh, approach a. a, a a, a boss or a harder b- battle. He wanted to do um, the chaos blades and I wanted to do the ax or, or use the new staff you get eventually. And I just thought it was great. And um, there's this desire to go back into the game after you beat it, which isn't always a thing in a primary single player campaign type game. So um, yeah, it's definitely my number one game of the year. It, 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 it is it really didn't disappoint me and it actually gave me more things to do. And that's the problem. I want to play more of that game, but I've got other things distracting me. So it's got a war Ragnarok. It's definitely a game that I, I know you can play it on PS4 and you should, if you can, but if you mm-hmm. can wait, playing on a PS5 was phenomenal. It was beautiful. I and playing it in, you know, resolution mode, uh, high frame rate, whatever you wanted to do was awesome. And I'm glad we have that in next gen where you can, you know, you have to sacrifice to play the way you want, whether you want it to be the most beautiful game or the, the best, uh, you know, uh, frame rate and uh, performance mode you can get. So, um, yeah. And I think this might be one of the last PlayStation games on both gens. And I think 2023 is really going to be the game of that. All the games are going to come in next gen, which is, which is good. Uh, Sony has said uh, the last week or the week before they said um, the the supply chain issues are basically over. So I think you're right. I think if they're announcing that you shouldn't have a problem finding a PlayStation five, theoretically this year, I think they're, they're finally going to make use of their uh, we believe in generations mantra and, and just sever the ties completely. Yeah. I think that's going to be a message with all of the consoles. Um, I think Xbox is the same, but I don't think they have anything announced that's going to be uh, on Xbox one anymore, which is, which is a good thing. And then we, we probably expect to see Nintendo bring out if, if it's, if it's uh, maybe announced this year, but launched in 2024, their next generation console too. So if it's announced this year, it'll be the very end of the year. Exactly. There'd have to be a big game that they would pair it with too. So maybe the next Odyssey two would be awesome. We'll see. Well, that is it for our award show. I hopefully uh, we can declare though. Vampire survivors is the co-op mode game of the year. It's our favorite game. That's it combined. Holy, I, I, expected that to go differently really i thought it might show up on your deep well no i i thought vampire survivors remember today i said there might be Mm -hmm. two games that make it to your list i thought vampire survivors would be on your list and i thought uh tmnt Mm. further down my list i thought might be somewhere on yours and there was a potential of tunic being on yours but i know you didn't like that as much as i did so i thought that might be 
pulling into your honorable mentions and on my top five or something, but I, I was hoping I kind of, I, I wondered if vampire survivors would be on yours, but it was again, like six months ago when you played it. Yeah. So is it top of mind for you? Did it stick out? I couldn't quite remember what you said other than like, you got to try this. Cause I remember instantly looking it up while you were talking about it. So um, I didn't expect us to be that in sync though with, with both of it in the number two spot. Like that's, I don't think that's happened before. No, I don't, I don't think so either. It was great. And I, I probably could have been, like you said, shredders revenge, maybe Kirby um, mm-hmm. and maybe tunic. Yeah. I think those were the games that were common threads um, that were in there. Cause I think tunic was probably past the top 10. It was further down for me, but yeah, I yeah. totally saw the, that what their intent was and just, didn't grab me as much as others, but yeah, yeah. Right. this is a, this is, I, I always love doing this Mark because you and I don't always tread the same path, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. Very, which maybe yeah, is endearing or, or frustrating to others. At the same time or whatever. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's what I love about this, right? Like it's, it's, um, we, we get two different perspectives from two, uh, you know, two different kind of approaches to gaming and, and what we're playing at what time and, and that kind of stuff. And um, it's, it's always interesting. So it's, it's weird when things kind of get that kind of synergy of, of vampire survivors landing in number two for each of us and number one for the overall couchy award. So awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good job. Vampire survivors, hopefully uh, saviors. So I called it survivors saviors. It's yeah. I always get the name wrong in 2023. It's going to be the year of saviors likes, maybe. So we're calling it. There we go. Uh, survivor likes. Yeah, exactly. Be, Excellent. Awesome. I want to try the DLC. I, I just, uh, I, you know, I didn't yeah. really get a chance to look into that. I saw it that it was on Steam. Um, and I don't, is that on Xbox right now? Is that? Well, Xbox says they're going to support it with, uh, with different uh, upgrades and things through its life. So mm-hmm. I don't know if this is a game will ever go off Game Pass. I hope it doesn't beauty that's that's fantastic i'd buy honestly this is another game i'd double dip on i looked up to see if it was on switch because i just want this everywhere and that's when i ended up getting it on easily be on switch you're right i mean it it should be yeah it should it should i'm playstation either uh, if there's problems with so many sprites on the screen Mm. yeah because there are points where it's overwhelming it almost feels like the xbox is going to start chugging because there's like 400 friggin sprites on the screen and there's particle effects going with your weapons and there's things spinning quickly and there's a whole lot of stuff going on. I'm wondering how, especially in a one person team, how intensive this is and if they can optimize it down or would they kind of need to bring in some team to, to, you know, I find a, you know a lot of times with a one person team, you're just like building it to build it. Oh, yeah, this is a simple graphics. It'll run on an Xbox. It'll run on PlayStation. Let's go. And you know, the, but I mean, it's running on mobile hardware. I wonder how far back on phones it would go. Um, you know, my phone's not new by. Any, I, I have a new phone ordered because I'm I'm still on my 11 Pro, um, and it's it's running fine. So. Interesting. Yeah, uh, apparently it's like the switch. It's like the Steam Deck game. Like people says that's the oh, game yeah. you play on Steam Deck. So I mean, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, that's that's pretty amazing. Yeah. So oh boy, congratulations! It's been a great year. Twenty twenty two is a, you know not the best year for me, but still a good year for gaming. And twenty twenty three, geez, oh Pete's mark, get ready, buddy. Oh my goodness, yeah. Xbox gonna is gonna finally fire in all sing- cylinders, and when they do. I don't know when I'm going to have time to play. Yep. It's going to be intense. It's going to be good. Yeah. All right. Well, folks, uh, hopefully you had a good time listening to our recap of the year. Let us know, though, if there's anything we missed or games that you still think that were great standouts of 2022. But in the meantime, Mark, tell people where they can find you on the interwebs. You can send all your hate to me for picking Pokemon as my game of the year uh, at the underscore Canardian on Twitter Instagram, TikTok, wherever you want to find me there. On Hive, I'm just Canardian. And uh, you can also find me in Discord. So make sure you join our Discord server and make fun of me over there. And that's really what you should do. Make fun of Mark more often. That's really a good opportunity. I'm ready for it. My body is ready. 
Exactly. Um, if you want to follow me, I'm at T Oxtra on Twitter, talking about the world of sports, especially with my Vikings that are probably going to be eliminated. But hey, you know what? I'm trying to be positive. Um, uh, other than that, just having a good time. Reach out to folks. We're looking for more folks to be on our podcast in 2023. So I've reached out to a, quite a few. We're going to have some new guests in 2023. It's going to be very exciting. So, But if there's other folks that maybe some folks that are listening to this podcast right now or folks you know that should be on this podcast, let us know as well. Very excited for that. So just DM us on our Twitters, uh, however you want to. Uh, but you can also find me on Hive at Todd of War as well. Secret French U on Twitter and also Secret French Unite is our website at the dot com. Oh my goodness. Well, that's it for this episode. Thank you for joining us. We had a great time and we're excited about 2023. So with that, Mark, thank you. Thank you for everyone who follows us and enjoys our take on the world of games. And as always, folks, it's always better to game together. <laughs> nailed it. Yeah, I nailed it. Yeah, I got it. Oh, boy. This podcast is part of the Secret Friends Unite podcasting network. Visit SecretFriendsUnite.com for more great shows, articles, news, reviews, and more. Secret Friends Unite podcasts are available on Apple, Google, Spotify, and other podcast services around the world. If you'd like to be part of the conversation, you can join us on Facebook or our new Discord server, or follow at Secret Friends U on Twitter. Please subscribe to Secret Friends Unite on YouTube and visit our merch store at tpublic.com. Just search Secret Friends Unite. Thanks for listening.